So, uh, my name is Claire Connor. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Fleming. Alex Hagelin. And Alex White. And um, we, as he was mentioning, I don't know if everybody caught it, but we are um, four American uh, master's students um, who are here to participate in an internship to identify um, investment opportunities to help encourage the economic development, especially in the South, um, to try and um, address some of the issues with unemployment. <coughs> so, um, as you heard, we recently spent two weeks in Beni Kadesh, which is in the Gouvernorats of Medellin um, in the south, and it is one of the poorest um, parts of the country. Uh, so we just wanted to give you a little overview of what we did there before we begin our presentation. First, we're going to talk about the fieldwork methods that we used, how we gathered our information while we, while we were there, and what type of research we did. Then we're going to provide a SWOT analysis of the region, which is the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats that we identified in Beni Kadesh. Then we are going to talk about some of the potential projects that we um, heard or brought to us or we identified while we were there. And then we're going to offer our own proposals for potential project ideas in Beni Kadesh. Um, so our field methods, our methodology basically was, um, was in three parts. Um, first we uh, did informational interviews with key figures that we identified around the region. So that included administrative um, personnel, um, people who were at the heads of um, associations, um, anybody who um, was already an, an entrepreneur in the region that would be able to assist us in identifying what was already working there, where the opportunities were, and what some potential projects would be. Um, along that line, we, um, we did a number of site visits to see what was already working and what the, what the region had to offer. Um, so we visited a number of, of farms as agriculture was a big, um, a big part of the projects that were there. Uh, we also visited a number of casseurs to see what the tourist um, market was. And then our final, um, our final piece of our methodology was a general survey, which we gave out as we, um, as we interacted with the people. And this is just to get the general <coughs> feeling of the people who have been living in the region, who know it, who know the region best, um, to see what they thought were some of the weaknesses and some of the opportunities. So now I will discuss some of the, the main actors in Beni Kadesh in the region. Um, first, there's the regional and local government. At the delegation level, um, the Beni Kadesh is one of nine um, districts in the Gouvernorat de Medellin, and currently they do not have a delegate. Um, the position is being um, held part-time by a replacement who is also a full-time delegate in another region. And the municipality is a similar situation. There are two full-time staff right now who provide permits for investment op um, opportunities. However, there is no mayor, and they are um, pretty severely understaffed due to the political transitions in the region. And then there are government organizations. There's the Office du Développement du Sud, and they um, have identified tourism as the best way for Beni Kadesh to develop um, economically, because they believe that tourism can be a vector for other parts of the economy. For example, if tourists come, that will um, improve the marketability of their artisanal goods and also their local products. Then there's the administration of agriculture and this individual is, is tasked with the job of providing technical assistance to local farmers and also making sure that these farmers when they invest in their land they have access to the government um, incentive programs and subsidies um, that they're offering specifically for Beni Kadesh. And then lastly, there are regional and local associations. Um, some of the main, the main associations is, one of the main ones is the Association pour le Développement Durable. And they are investing in local uh, chambres d'hôtes. They are supporting local, um, local artisans and they are helping brand and market local products and sell them abroad. They have a partnership with the Département de l'Hérault uh, in France. And that's where they also receive a lot of their funding. 
And then lastly, there are several groups, the Association des Jeunes, and it's of several villages, and they work mostly with restoring the casseurs of the region and um, creating informational tourist maps and signs around the area to help tourists find their way. Um, so these are just, uh, we have several pictures just to, to kind of show you what we did. This is at the office um, at ADD with the um, Association du Development Durable. Um, this is, these are two of the students that helped us. We had three Tunisian students um, uh, who, have their, um, who have their degrees who were helping us um, along the way. Um, they were invaluable to our project. Um, this is a meeting with the stand-in delegate at the, um, at the del delegate office in, um, in Beni Khvesh. This is one of our field visits, which is a, is a peach and grape farm, uh, which was doing remarkably well. Um, it was one of the most successful farms that we saw there. Um, it did have some problems because it, uh, the region is so arid with, um, with water rights and water access. It's extremely um, expensive to put in a well, and the wells are, are extremely regulated by the government. Um, this is one of the casseurs. This is Kassour Kaluf. And um, this is an, an old um, olive press that used to be used with a camel who did it. And finally, this is the artisan center, this is the Maison des Artisanats. And um, this is um, some of the women that are learning to, um, to do some local, some traditional artisan products. Um, and if you can see, our, our Tunisian counterpart there is holding the surveys that we, that we handed out as we, as we went along. So I'm going to kick off the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis with the, the strengths what you identified. And first we had, there is strong water access. There's a good amount of water underground. The question is really sort of accessing that water, but it is available underground if you can get to it. Uh, the rich soil provides uh, a lot of uh, ability to do agriculture in the region. Right now there's a lot of medicinal herbs, aromatic herbs, olives, figs, and pistachios that are being grown and they're sort of well adapted to the environment already and do not require as much water or are sort of um, uh, drought resistant. There's also resource rich land, meaning sort of mi the mineral side of things. So you could do extractive um, industry there to, to get clay or gypsum or, or other things that are prevalent in the area. Good, the train is good for herd animals. Uh, above all, we saw goats and sheep. Um, there's a rich cultural heritage as well with the, the architect, archaeological sewers in the region. There's good investment incentives, the, uh, the preems. Uh, so that's basically a bonus for, for investment to take place. And there's also many active development associations as Alex addressed earlier. So although there were many strengths that we were able to identify, there are some um, glaring weaknesses that we saw, um, that being uh, very low levels of rainfall in the area. Um, so Beni Kadesh is very arid. While there is water underneath the ground, uh, the, the area in general is very dry, and sometimes for two to three years they won't have rain, which makes it d tough to cultivate um, water-intensive fresh produce. Uh, the local associations in the area are also um, not always well equipped um, to actually uh, execute the, the projects that they would like to. So sometimes they're very motivated and would like to get going on a project, but they might not have uh, the savoir faire or the uh, resources to be able to ex actually execute a project. Um, some of the cultural sites that we saw, while they're numerous, uh, they aren't always well maintained. So the deterioration of some of the tourist centers uh, was a big problem. We also saw um, that the community in general is very much locally based in its production. So they, they do produce figs, uh, dried figs and olives and goat cheese, but it stays within the family or within the city and they aren't looking to export it. The educational system often um, was cited as a problem when we distributed the surveys um, one of the overwhelming results from the surveys was that people felt that the education in Beni Kadesh did not prepare them to enter the workforce. This was one of the highest responses in the surveys. People didn't feel like they were ready to enter the workforce upon completion of their education. Um, and lastly, we noticed a general poor um, infrastructure 
um, in the area, there w there's not much available right now to actually begin developing, um, so that was a definite weakness. And I will discuss opportunities in the region. Um, so I guess first of all, tourism. We saw several tourists in Benikadesh. Almost daily they would pass through, and we interviewed them and spoke with them, and they all said that they were either staying for one night or they were passing through for lunch. And there wasn't much, uh, there wasn't many people who wanted to stay for a long time. But there was that presence. So the residents of Benikadesh believe that if they can create a more attractive site and have something more engaging on the ground for their tourism sector, that people may end up coming to Benny Kadesh for lunch and then deciding to spend a few days there instead. So that's an opportunity, a potential opportunity. Um, high number of potential laborers, I mean with high unemployment rates come high numbers of potential laborers. And actually many of the students we spoke to have university degrees but are still unable to find work. So there is um, a knowledgeable group of um, local unemployed youth. And there's local artisanal production. Um, the Association pour le développement durable has um, built a house, actually, at a, a home where um, many of the local women can produce artisanal goods, and they've supported them um, quite extensively. There's plenty of land. A lot of there's rich, there's rich soil, and it's not being exploited to full capacity. And also, we we found the region to be um, quite attractive, especially with the Kasurs, and there's many sites to visit, and we believe that kind of eco and rural tourism could be um, a large opportunity in the region. And I will round off our SWOT analysis with the threats. Um, so one of the big threats that we saw when we were there is this, is this resistance to change that we, we, talk, we found in, amongst a lot of the local people. Um, even when they, if they had ideas, um, they didn't necessarily want those ideas when they realized they, when they were realized to affect the way they were living their life. Um, and so, when we talked to them about the process of developing their, their projects and and, um, and and doing some entrepreneurship, they um, they they kind of were very hesitant to take that next step. And so, f for any future investor, that would be something that they would they they might have to overcome. Um, as Elizabeth mentioned before, um, the society is generally just not a non-consumer society, so they just don't um, tend to want to buy their goods. They they want to they want to produce it in house. So they have they produce their own olive oil. They all have their own olive trees and produce what they need. But they there's not this mentality that they're going to sell it or go buy it down the street. Um, we did see a lot of um, rent-seeking behavior in some of the um, administrative officials and associations, meaning that they, um, it, it was a zero-sum mentality where they saw that um, there was only so many themselves, their families, and their friends, and so there wasn't this, we can all benefit together mentality that is very much necessary for the economic development that needs to happen there. Um, and finally, high unemployment, um, in the region has, has also left a lot of them without, um, without experience working and without the, the knowledge that they need um, to, to enter the workforce and um, or to create their, their own jobs. Okay. So we compiled a list of somewhere around 20 original projects and sort of whittled it down to uh, a smaller group but still kept uh, several with a, a ranking system uh, which was based on what we were tasked with. So we wanted to uh, reduce unemployment, particularly towards young people. Uh, we wanted to have uh, investment that was uh, sustainable, economically sustainable uh, in the environment, and uh, also that was going to produce uh, returns for the investor. So it was going to be uh, profitable engagement. So what we came up with was a list of several uh, local options, some were, were provided again by um, people we spoke with, some were, were things that we identified as well. Uh, what sort of came up to the top were things that, again, scored highly on what we were charged with, those five really criteria. Um, so dried figs and olive products, as we talked about, were already grown in the region. There's already a savoir faire to know how to do that, and um, it's also well adapted to the water res restrictions in the region. Some of the other ones fared a little less well, like extractive industry is, has a little less um, kind uh, environmental footprint. So uh, the water intensive agriculture was also scored lower just because uh, of its questionable sort of uh, long-term environmental impact. So we have a, a very detailed ranking of, of those in the, in the report that we compiled as well.
So those projects that Alex just talked about were projects that maybe some of the locals brought to us or we heard about or we were able to identify. But after we heard and did all of our research, we sat down and tried to brainstorm um, some ideas that we thought would be um, very, very likely to benefit Beni Kadesh. And we came up with three of them, one in agriculture, one in industry, and one in tourism. So the first one that we want to present as a potential project proposal is the commercialization of goat products. Um, when we did our ranking, it scored one of the highest, um, at the 10.5 out of 15, this meaning that it was um, had very good potential for sustainability, had low startup costs, it was environmentally friendly, and had the potential to give high returns to investors. So the reason we thought goat products would be a, a good project is that um, it's already a local tradition. People um, have herds themselves, they know how to herd um, goats, they know how to take care of them, and, and goats are very um, adept to the local terrain in the mountains. Um, particularly, the alpine goat was just, um, identified as important for producing um, very high quality milk products. So there's an alpine goat and an Arab goat. And the alpine goats, while they're more expensive, they produce better quality products. So this would be um, what we would suggest to move forward on this project. Um, also, like I said, there's already a local knowledge on how to cultivate uh, dairy products from the goats. Um, and we believe that if this idea were actually pushed further, there would be a potential to uh, produce very high quality products that often are in very high demand in foreign markets, especially in Europe and in the US where goat cheese, uh, goat milk, and we also heard about goat ice cream could uh, be very um, important and bring a, a high return to investors if this project ever got off the ground. Second project that we talk about is the eco and alternative tourism option. And this was something that, as Alex talked about, when we interacted with tourists who were coming to the region, they were interested in the area, they liked the area, the, the terrain was beautiful, they wanted to uh, enjoy it, but they were really more on the way from maybe the coast over to the Sahara or back uh, sort of on that tourist circuit and not really looking to spend much time. So we thought that given its, its beautiful landscape, the, the abundance of Kasur and sort of the interest in, in enterprising or um, intrepid European tourists to go and have an active, um, ecologically friendly uh, uh, tourism holiday, would, we thought it might be a good idea for, for the region. So this type of option has been successfully uh, implemented in Latin America, and uh, certainly the terrain is, is well adapted for things like mountain biking or hiking tours, and um, it's, I think it's a great idea. So the um, Office du Développement du Sud in Medellin, they, they queued, me off, queued us off on, on, on this idea in particular. They're very excited about the possibility of uh, solar energy in Beni Kadesh, in the region of Beni Kadesh. And I mean, obviously it gets a lot of sun, it's environmentally sustainable, and it would reduce Tunisia's dependency on um, foreign oil and foreign energy sources. And so the Office du Développement du Sud has been in, in discussions with several investors and several companies, both in Tunisia and abroad, and they feel that it is an implementable project and that they see it happening in two phases. One, they would open a production facility in Beni Kadesh, production facility for solar panels, and then they would proceed to build a solar panel farm in Beni Kadesh, and then they would sell that energy back to the grid. And they have assured us that the infrastructure is already existent in Beni Kadesh to sell energy um, achieved through, through solar power back to the grid and make a profit on it. We believe this is a potentially a large, significant initial investment, but that could have um, great returns and create a lot of jobs in the area. Um, yeah, so that is, those are our, our project proposals. Um, we would just um, like to, again, thank everybody that, that allowed us to come here. We had such a great time in Beni Kadesh. Um, our, our people on the ground were wonderful and we could not have done it without them. Um, so, yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Question? Uh, good analysis. Uh, <clears throat> and I like the, the SWOT analysis, and particularly the, the weaknesses and the threats. Um, I think uh, 
could have been uh, could be good to present the region. I mean, where it is, mm -hmm. how big it is, how many people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, I don't know that region. It would be interesting, yeah. you know, to get the size, uh, right. a few statistics mm -hmm. um, on that region. And what does it mean in the Tunisian context? How important it is, is it? I mean, is it just a few, uh, I mean, is it 200,000 people there or is it 10,000? We have, we actually have a, a, all that information yeah. with us if you'd like to see okay, it. Okay, but maybe on the presentation, yeah. one map, so many people, huh? Yeah. In and the it, presentation, uh, you start with one or two slides yeah. that you know, mm -hmm. defines the context mm -hmm. of the yes. Yes. I was also wondering whether uh, you met uh, uh, local banks or microfinance institutions or direct question is there for instance an agency an enda agency enda, enda is a kind of large microfinance yeah. network so, well, so benny Kfesh has one bank and we do know that it is only open two days a week in limited okay. hours at that so that bank we were told was not um was, was a place that was just for like local like personal banking um and then we talked with ODS who provided us with some information on, on microfinance banks. Just one branch? Mm -hmm. Just one branch. Yeah. I think there's two branches. It's one bank, I think, two branches. Are you just office that open was was bank? Yeah. So in any case, you know, in setting the context it would be interesting Absolutely. to know, you know, how is the the region banker? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because whatever project you're going to promote, at the end of the day, there will have to be a bank around or a microfinance institution. So in terms of next step, depending on the size of the project, but it would be interesting in the mapping to show the resources in terms potential resources in terms of supply of finance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you have a chance, if there are such banks, you know, to meet those bankers and discuss, you know, their not only the administration, mm -hmm. the governors and municipalities and so on and so forth, but the, the financiers, mm -hmm. they can give you a good clue of you know, what is possible and what are the constraints and so on. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of projects. Um, I like the goat cheese. <laughs> I'm French. <laughs> I come from a region in France which is specialized in goat, goat cheese. So yes, go for the goat cheese. <laughs> and even the goat milk in Tunisia gets a big premium above uh, cow milk. Yes. It's considered as a very rich milk, and for uh, babies, it's a very well, uh, you know, appreciated milk. So I think that's uh, a good. Uh, a good area because you know it's there it's not too complicated yeah. and it can directly uh, quite quickly get to, to results mm. or revenues mm. with small investments and you know there can be you know before thinking of export markets you can just sell uh, more in Tunisia and go to make the uh, tourism uh, I don't know if it's only for European intrepid tourists or also for American intrepid tourists. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, uh, there are less of us, but yeah. <laughs> uh, there are less intrepid American tourists. We tend to go to France when we yeah. when we <laughs> um, I think, in principle, it's interesting. Uh, I don't know again the region, but I can see a general issue of uh, what is the level of uh, security in the region. It's becoming more and more of an issue in the region as a whole. And uh, so I, I don't know what the real potential is. Um, I mean, th there is this concern or threat, which is, which can be a, a problem for that kind of tourism, unfortunately. I mean, I don't know if I would dare to, you know, go, you know when you hear, uh, I mean, this is something that I can see as, yeah, there is potential, but there is this uh, threat in there. Mm -hmm. And the solar, solar industry, solar energy, it's not specific to that region. It's everywhere in Tunisia. The question is, why hasn't it 
uh, developed more. Uh, why is Tunisia behind Morocco in terms of solar energy? And uh, the problem is the rega regulatory environment and the fact that as an, in, as an independent producer, we cannot sell to Steg. Uh, so um, this is something you, you're right to identify it as a real good potential. Uh, but there are still issues to get uh, you know, the, the national grid to promote uh, private producers of uh, electricity. Mm -hmm. But hopefully that can be resolved in the very soon. And uh, if and when it's resolved, that should unleash a lot of potential okay. in the country. But uh, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>